Hi guys, I wanted to show you for you this video about what watch is best for shooting. Now more specifically, this is what watch is best for me shooting. I'm a USPSA range officer when I'm on the range most of the time. And uh, it without a doubt has to be some form of dive watch. Now I'll talk about this watch in particular. Uh, this is the one that accompanies me in most of my trips. Um, you'll see me if I'm shooting from POV, it's usually this watch that's on my wrist. If not like a Casio G-Shock because I'm memeing being a Russian or something like that. Now, the main thing about a dive watch is that, well, and specifically an ISO certified dive watch like the Casio Duro, is that the ISO certification for dive watches is a, a real deal thing. Like there aren't many things in watches um, apart from accuracy on mechanical components that... Um, you know, quite frankly, any quartz watch will beat a mechanical watch. Um, the the ISO certification for dive watches is a stringent test of its capability to to being waterproof. And uh, you may have watches that are like waterproof, water resistant, one hundred fifty or whatever. Uh, all of those mean nothing. They they really do mean nothing unless it's like two hundred above, um, <clears throat> and you know it's actually an ISO certified diver. Um, or comes from a very reputable brand like Rolex or something like that. Now I'm not talking about not talking about taking a Rolex to uh, a shooting match, although I see a lot of people do that. And a dive watch will have the shock resistance and weather resistance you need to be outdoors, and it's, uh, you will not have to worry about your watch failing you. Now that doesn't now in Nevada. That's not that often that we need to worry about that but I did shoot up until recently mostly in Seattle and having a watch that could withstand the elements you know being standing in the rain for hours on end that's an important thing ultimately it's just one last thing to worry about now the main complication that's on a dive watch that I like and it's better than a stopwatch because stopwatch is usually quite fiddly you have to go you know beep, 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 you know, a few things to actually kick it off and then remind yourself you can't just look at it as a glance necessarily um, and that is the dive bezel. And what this is, and you may have had other watches that look like a diver watch and has a bezel with, you know, markers and stuff, but unless it rotates, then it really doesn't serve the same purpose. And the idea is that you move the, the dot to where the minute hand is. And then at this point, you've now got basically a 60 minute stopwatch or 60 minute counter. And you just wait until the, you know, you could glance down, you can see how far, t how much time has elapsed since you set it uh, in minutes. This is important in USPSA because one of the ways to have a really bad day, a really bad match is if a match just takes way too long. So there's a lot of waiting and not much shooting. And the easiest way for this to happen is if there's complicated stages and people just want to take a lot of time doing their walkthrough at the beginning. So when you get to a stage, you don't just start shooting. There's five minutes officially on the rule book for you to actually walk through the stage and understand what you're going to do. Now, if it's a particularly complicated stage, a lot of people go through again and again and again. The whole squad might be sort of like an agreement. Yeah, there's a complicated stage. I want to do it again. It's really up to the range officer to enforce that time limit. And so when I step onto the, onto the range after I've given my briefing... I set the time, I say, you've got five minutes, I'll give people a two and one minute warning, and I kick them off at five minutes on the dot. So this is why I like it. Yeah, could, you could do it with other watches or keep a mental break, but if you had your choice, it would be one of these. So this is the Casio Duro. It's a very inexpensive watch for $49. You're not going to get a quality watch especially this is by far and away the cheapest iso certified diver watch um, on the market that i know of um, and one that comes with a really nice stainless steel case the finishing on this case is really quite fantastic um, it it is genuinely a really nice case like i have seikos that cost two or three times more and this genuinely looks nice. So the, the polishing on the side looks great. The angles are actually contoured. And so it's not just roughshod machining or something like that. It's a genuinely nice case. The dial is really nice. It's got this sort of very fine sunburst black that catches the light quite nicely, but nothing too egregious. Um, probably got to do with the fact that, yes, it's nice to sort of a diver. It has to be legible. 
and so it does have a very legible dial and hands. I will have to give it a knock on the hands. They look to me very thin. Um, I don't know, it's just, just an impression thing. It just looks like they've been cut out of like, well, not even like a, a tin can or something like that. They just look just a little too thin. Now, they are cut precisely, so they don't look bad, but you, you kind of need to give it a, a more of a, a halo of quality for those hands to actually look acceptable. Now, when you get this watch, it comes with a really awful um, rubber strap. Now, I've gotten, I like rubber straps. I've got nothing against them. Uh, I, I like a really nice rubber strap. It's, it can be a really nice combo, but certainly the one that comes with this one is just ugly. It feels nice, but it, it's really, really ugly. And from the impression of the strap to the rest of the watch, it just looks, you know, relatively cheap. Um, so, so I do advise getting, say, like a 22 millimeter NATO strap like this. And this upgrades the look immensely. And they only cost like, you can get like a pack of five for $10 on Amazon. So the lug width on this is 22 millimeters. So you just look up 22 millimeter NATO strap on Amazon. You'll be like literally an unbelievable amount of options. Uh, I like this orange. I used the first watch I bought after my G-Shock basically died. Uh, no, it didn't die. I just didn't, you know, I didn't want to replace the battery. I didn't really like, like that watch anymore. As I said from my last story, um, I bought a watch that had this sort of orange theme to it. And I really loved it. It was like, it was only a 30 pound watch from Sainsbury's or something like that. It was just something to tide me over until I got a watch that I actually really wanted, you know, just basically a fashion watch. And sure enough, it died. And that's probably because I was used to wearing G-Shocks all my life. And I took it into the beach in France. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sure enough, it died not long after that trip. And it was a quart, so it must have rusted out the internals pretty bad or something. I didn't notice, but anyway, I've since then I've I've wanted an orange themed watch. And along with the strap, I saw on I think it was a Reddit group for for watches, someone had taken what is I, I don't know if it's genuine. I doubt it. An Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean XL Bezel, and and put it on one of these. Now, I'm not a really big fan of Omega, but the Planet Ocean XL is really cool. I, I don't know, I have a thing for orange themed watches, and really the only thing that's really cool about that watch is uh, its big hands and the bezel, but mostly the bezel. Like the big hands on a lot of other Omegas, but the, the orange was really, really nice. and. The fact that I could get something like that without having to pay like $7,000, I think, the, that it costs for that watch, um, was really an awesome opportunity. So I think I got this for like $40 or $50, so nothing too crazy. Um, and it was a pretty easy mod, just, you know, just rip the black one off and put it on. I put that black one in the bin. It was ugly. Um, it has this really stupid triangle up top that doesn't even fit the bezel. Um, so, so I highly recommend doing this mod. But it does, I would say, it, it, it costs more than the watch itself, so I'm not exactly sure if it's hard to justify, but one aspect of modding your watches is that um, it makes it more uniquely yours. Now, you could sort of cringe, okay, here, here we go, it's a Frankenstein watch or something like that, but this is still my watch, and I get to have it the way that I want, and if it's got a touch of Omega uh, Planet Ocean XL in it, that's kind of cool. It's got the only part of Planet Ocean XL that I actually really want. Um, and this, I'm not trying, it's not a knockoff or something like that. It's clearly still a Casio Duro. It is not in any way, shape or form an homage. I just love this combo. Anyway, you've seen in a lot of my videos, that's what this watch is. I highly recommend it. If you don't have a dive watch, this is not a bad one to get. It's not the best looking out of the watch, but they take it as an opportunity to make it your own. All right, until next time, see you around.